Hey, we've decided to trek around the mountain of Sangate. We think we'll be able to complete this 38 mile trek. Looks good. With 8,000 feet in elevation change in three or four days. It's a really hard hike, lots of high mountain passes, sleeping at 15,000 feet. And to make it even more fun, the whole family is coming. Look at this setup. Graham on the backpack, he doesn't want to go out. We're going to do the Asangate trek with our gato. Ready to go on a three or four day trek. Ready to go, I'm excited. Here we go, doing the Asangate trek. So funny that we weren't even going to do this a few days ago. And up there at the Rainbow Mountains, this mountain just looks so epic in the distance. Four hours from there to here, and this should be a three day trek. That's what our plan is, it might take four. But we got plenty of food, beautiful, beautiful views up here. We're bringing the cat too. <laughs> we got a cat and a dog. You know, it feels good to be out here on the edge exploring. And you know, we're not the first people to, to do it, but we might be the first people to bring a cat and a dog. Might, possibly, you know? So we're calling this the Ausangato Trek. <laughs> the mountain's called Ausangate, and in Spanish, cat is gato, so Ausangato. This hike is a complete circumnavigation of the mountain Ausangate, and the hike starts at 14,000 feet of elevation. It's really good, we spent a couple nights up there in the village acclimating, hitting the hot springs. This is the first time I've ever walked around a mountain, and I'd say it's definitely the first time Graham's ever walked around a mountain, so <laughs> pretty epic. And the night when we first saw this mountain, over there at the Ramo Mountains, we were sleeping up there about 16,000 feet and I could not sleep. Here the campsites will be at about 15,100. The highest pass will be 17,000 feet. We left the van down there at this very nice guy's house. Probably gonna give him a couple bucks a day, keeping it safe. And of course the elevation is a big deal here, but my man, concern is the cold. This morning there was a lot of frost on the van. I think it only got down to like 33, but getting up in the morning in the tent is gonna be exciting. <laughs> Crazy adventure. We should be going right through that pass to the left of these. Well, that's not too high up. the first campground on the trail if you're coming from Pachanta going clockwise around the mountain. Look at that epic view of the other glacier. Wow we just saw some chinchillas right there. Look like cats just frolicking jumping across rocks. Ooh, so far so good. I'm feeling really good. I feel like after this I'm gonna be super strong. Graham's walking right now so that's pretty nice. I'm just trying to stay really close to him so I can give him a little bit of shade. I did put sunscreen on his ears. Sambrita is loving running back and forth. She's carrying her food and also her buddy's food. Also a harness and a leash for Graham, just in case he gets a little unruly. And her leash, wow. It's really hard to talk and walk at this altitude. <laughs> just had a snack and some water. It's pretty interesting landscape that we're walking through. The incredible views of Asangate have been such a great motivator. We passed a whole bunch of people today and they're going the opposite way of us. So they started in Upis probably. None of them had been walking on their own. They all have a guide. And they also have a team of donkeys following them and carrying all their stuff. Above all, I'm just super thankful that the van is running well again. And we're able to drive up to these kind of places. Peru mechanics have been a bit of a mixed bag. We had four mechanic errors. We've got a lot of good work done here. It's just amazing that Peru lets you bring a dog up here. You know, Costa Rica, this would not fly. You know, regardless of the ups and downs, this is definitely ups right now.
Trying to get back in the bag, buddy? <laughs> Good boy, Grandpa. Welcome to the most beautiful lunch spot ever. <laughs> that is so true. So we have some chickpea sammies. This is like garbanzo beans, tomato, some nori. This is the last spot to camp until we go up and over the pass across these mountains. It's only 1.30, we have five miles left. Until about 5.30 the sun sets. Wish us luck. kind of goes up pretty far up the pass. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna make it over the pass and hopefully on the other side we'll be able to make camp for tonight. After this, it's all downhill. We just have to make it to this spot. <laughs> Over there looks okay, but looks like rain is coming. We gotta get out of here. Bad news and good news. Bad news, the rain's here. Good news, we're high enough that it's snow. <laughs> I feel like they get you less wet. You know, I prefer snow up here. But just a crazy climate, crazy terrain. This is only pass number one of the hike. And I'm in love with the Alsungato trek. Finally going down! And this part is pretty dangerous, honestly. Just a straight rock fall above and below. And just when we were feeling a little bit demoralized by this relentless ascent, we met a couple of people the first all day with no guide as well. We showed him the cat, he said, whoa, that's funny. There's a guy back there with a bicycle and he saw some guys earlier with skis. So, a lot of people bringing funny things up today. <laughs> no way. That is so cool. This guy is the coolest guy I've ever met. That's incredible! What? <laughs> Man, when they said there was a guy up here with a bike, I figured they meant he was walking it. He's really riding. And he said, it's a route that goes from Bolivia called the Tres Cordilleras. And he has a friend behind here who's biking with him. He's been biking since Santiago de Chile. Impressive. So this is what's on the other side of pass number one. breakfast and Danny while I was making the oatmeal started packing up everything looks like we're heading out of here soon on a long walking day what are you doing buddy good morning back on the trail a couple bugs last night we slept pretty well Danny didn't get to sleep until 
like halfway through the night so that was kind of rough just because of the altitude Danny wasn't able to sleep he said he was gasping for breath couldn't get a deep breath and it was making it really hard to sleep the 15,600 feet we're at is pretty hard to breathe I slept okay. Graham, Graham slept in my sleeping bag with me and Sambrita slept in her sleeping bag. We all shared a two-person tent, but it didn't feel that small this time. I think mostly because Sambrita had her own sleeping bag where she could crawl up into a little ball at our feet. I feel pretty good for walking today. It should be about 10 miles today and the elevation is gonna be a little bit more intense than yesterday. The difference is that it's a higher grade, just straight up, whereas yesterday, kind of a gradual, a little bit more gradual. We're just gonna take our time. I'd be fine with doing this in four days. We have enough food. But this morning, Graham and Sambrita were wandering around. They were really great, really close by. Just makes me feel really good about bringing Graham, even though it is kind of hard to carry him. I really didn't want to leave him behind because he loves going out here and, you know, he's been all over the place with us, so I thought it would be great to bring my little kitten. We're going over the biggest pass of the trip today, which is Palomino Pass, 17,000 feet. They're so cute. Look, they're all up there, too. Goodbye, Chinchi. Chinchi, yeah. To tell the truth, I've been dying today. <laughs> I'm gonna take a bit more of my weight. Probably because I couldn't sleep, I don't know. The elevation, this is the moment right here It's gonna make it worth it. The glacier, Sangate, beautiful lake. Oh man, okay, I'll just sleep here. <laughs> well guys, welcome to an even better lunch spot. Beauty. Wow, so we're coming down into this epic valley below Ausangate, Ausangato. That hill off on the left is gonna be our main challenge for the day. We call it Palomino Pass. 2,200 feet elevation gain in very little distance. We can either spend the night down here or if we think we can do it, kind of like yesterday, then we'll try to book it up over and camp on the other side at an even lower elevation, which would be nice for me. Grammy's walking back there. What a good cat, you know? House and gato. Oh, the dog's really good too, so break that. It's like, he has walked 90% of the way today. Probably already three or four miles. Incredible, this cat. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good going without elevation for a while. It feels nice on my back, but I do have like a tinge in the center that I think is from wearing my backpack on my back and then Graham on my front. I feel really strong. I probably won't even be able to talk whenever we start going uphill. Elevation game we're about to do is gonna be crazy. I'm excited to get up and over the pass I do think I messed up on. I got some ready to eat quinoa, beans, and lentils. They ended up being so heavy because of the water that's already in it. It's just really hard figuring out backpacking food when there's no dehydrated foods for sale here. I'm going to have to figure out something better. Be carrying the tent, my sleeping mat, my sleeping bag, and somebody's a sleeping bag. And Danny's carrying the food, his sleeping bag, his sleeping mat. So Danny's bag is definitely heavier, but it could compete with mine, I think, when I have to carry Graham. <laughs> we definitely brought the bare minimum, but with the elevation, I think it feels a hundred times heavier. So I'm glad we packed flight. I think Graham's been walking so much today because there's not really any people over here, but he seems to really love it out here. Just exploring, you know how cats are curious. It's snowing and I can look at a glacier. It's amazing. Wow. 
Wow, this lodge is in the middle of nowhere. That's gotta be one of the coolest places you could stay in the world. Machurakai Lodge. You definitely have to hit him up beforehand because there's nobody there. And I bet you'd have to take a motorcycle or a horse to get up here. But nonetheless, we're heading straight up that hill. Almost to the top of the pass. Alamani Pass, the highest point of the trek. 17,000 feet. Oh my god. It was a struggle. Look at that. And where we came from. Good job, Emily! Yeah, this morning we are past that red mountain around the corner miles insane that you can walk this far <laughs> enough water for breakfast so we just packed up and came down to this lake in front of a glacier not a bad spot for brecky but last night was crazy cold i don't think i was ever really warm after probably midnight before then it was early enough that it was still warm and we got some good sleep it's good we went to bed so early yeah it was kind of a rough night the altitude wasn't messing with me um i was able to breathe okay on my back first thing this morning we realized that some water was dripping in because the whole tent was just covered with frost and we quickly removed the, the rain fly, you know, the part that keeps the water out. And this is kind of what I was expecting up here on the Asangate. Some cold temps, a little bit of uh, hardiness required. <laughs> bon appetit. Looks like these guys want some bricky too. <laughs> Those alpacas are super cute and I think I even got a clip of what they sound like. Listen to this. I know you guys, I can't find the cat. Where is he? Well, check this out. We're packing up here and I was about to put my coat on. Look what's in here. So you think that's emerging from its cocoon or something? Why is it doing it on my coat? Your coat's a good place. <laughs> Whoa, I almost put that on. It's like a butterfly coming out of a caterpillar, right? No, I think it's like a weird bug coming out of itself. It has wings. There you go, buddy. Live a good life. Emerge as a butterfly. This is the last big uh, incline of the trip. From here, it should be relatively downhill, but we have a, a long walk today. <laughs> Much longer than the other days, but hopefully it's not too bad if we're all downhill. All right, a couple more steps before we're gonna see a nice new view. It's a little bit windy here for you, huh? <laughs> meets the wild shepherd dogs. Muy bien. Tranquilos. Even with her backpack on, she just wants to play. She's on a 30 mile trek and she's more energy than these dogs. 
That's my girl. She's a good dog. Muy bien, sombrita. Hola, chicos. So we're now at least two thirds around Alsangate Mountain. It feels pretty good. Graham's doing well, Sombrita's doing well. I feel like it's okay if we have to camp in Upis now. No big deal, or before or after. It's funny that we came up to the shelter across the lake and it looked like such a perfect spot for lunch. And it's this dilapidated, like, what is going on with this thing? I thought it had some swagger, but now it's fun. And that was crazy that Sombrita, all of a sudden we saw her limping and that whole area by that lake has these really uh, spiky growth. Yeah, like little plants that are just made out of spikes. When I was pulling them out, I fell onto them on my hand. And, mm. Wow, they super hurt. I know her paw pads are stronger than my hands. I carried her for a ways. <laughs> <laughs> really then right that. after that, the trail like disappeared at this cliff. <laughs> we thought, okay, no, but well, we were able to skirt around it. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of fun. I kind of like that. It's yeah. sort of a dangerous trail. Like back fun. here when we were going through those rocks and going through these big brush and I guess we took a llama trail all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of llama trails. We're gonna have some lunch at this nice shelter and yep. you know, this beautiful, beautiful shelter. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really seen many people today and it's no. been just beautiful yeah. nature. And if we did see someone, they were super far away. So that it has been a really good day just for us. Yeah. Yeah, we just, spent a good while by that glacier because that yeah. was like the most epic part. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and just beautiful places. We have found the time to stop, which is what this should be about. You know, we're not really, we don't have a guide. We're not trying to set a world record here. We should just enjoy it a little bit more than than trying to get back tomorrow. Yeah, that South Die Trek, after you did the part, it was like downhill so far that your feet were just dying because you're like yeah. kind of slowing yourself down with each step. Yeah. And this trek has been way harder. <laughs> Tell me that's the top, Emily. Kinda. You fired. Ooh, nice lake though. Wow. Oh. At least this will be the last significant uphill. <laughs> that's what we said about the last one. <laughs> 500 feet out, it's small, but look at that lake way down there. I don't think that was 500 feet. I know. How's Grammy doing in there? Oh, he's, he's just taking a nap. Yeah, he's sleeping. Curled up. <laughs> Must be nice. This is so amazing conquering this whole landscape. I don't think it would be the same if we had a guide. Me and Emily out here, husband wife bonding, <laughs> plus cat and dog. I'm excited to see the next valley as always. It's been epic to see 360 degrees. You know, I've been trying to take some really nice videos to show you guys. So if you appreciate it, want to buy me a beer? Head on over to the Patreon and check that out. Become a member of the family. So last night I got out my phone to listen to a podcast that I downloaded with Danny. We like to listen to Midnight Burger together. And then I realized that it only had 1%. I just had 20%. So wild. Oh, it must just be really cold. I put it into my sleeping bag. The amount of charge never rose. It hasn't died still. Seven o'clock last night. And it's four o'clock now, and it still says one percent. Hot spring. We made it to the Upis campground for some mashed potatoes, bean, and stuffing dinner. But I wish I would have kept walking to stay by ourselves away from this dirty campground. Good morning! We're having breakfast after a short walk. It's our last day walking and we don't have very far before we get back to the van. Oh man, this whole field is full of those stickies that we're getting in Sombrita's paws. So, you know, Emily's, Emily's killing it. And 
I assume my turn is next. <laughs> I tried to carry her a different way. It was like impossible. I think that's how firemen carry people out of buildings, Emily. I saw, I saw an Instagram thing about rescuing your dog. Wow, definitely buy some booties for your dog. We're gonna get them right after this. But, wow, Emily, my turn. This? Yep, you got her. Dead man lift. Come in there. <laughs> the dog is never behind us, so if she is, she's obviously in trouble. So I was like, I don't know, we have to do something. We can't just let her walk there. And I remember on Instagram one time I saw someone show how to like rescue a dog if they're stuck somewhere lifted her up <laughs> and carried her across the field. She is 60 pounds and plus my backpack, that's, that's half my body weight. It kind of hurts your neck, so that's why I had to take a break and then luckily Danny took over for me because I really don't think it's a good idea for her to walk. Poor baby. Yeah, so we only got two miles to go, but we're really sliding into home on this one. All the way around this mountain, almost done. <laughs> and we brought a cat. <laughs> And a dog. So after taking another break because some is super heavy, <laughs> we found a bit of a trail right next to us and I walked a little bit up and down it and I didn't really find any spiky bits. So I'm really hoping that we can have the dog walk from here to Pachata. Yeah, we're gonna put her on the leash so that she doesn't go off the trail because she does like to explore sometimes and her poor little paws can't handle it. Every battery is dead on everything. <laughs> like how much does this one have? Like 2%. Two, yeah, this, is... <laughs> this is the hardest thing I've ever done and it's the hardest thing Emily's ever done. It's a great trip over here. I'm just glad that we did it together. Look at, this is what I was sitting on for the break. Check that. It doesn't even look like it would be dangerous. No, th that's the worst part is that these, this does not look like different than normal grass. The way we parked, I think we should be able to see the van in a second here. Oh, so excited for that moment. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, what? Look how tired that dog is. He didn't want to blow the other dog. Oh, oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. It's still there. No broken glass. Looks good. our trek around awesome god they make sure to like comment and subscribe we want to know your favorite part it was an epic time for both of us and we we're so glad to bring you guys along if you want to further support us head over to our patreon to join the family hey thanks for coming with us guys we're gonna go hit the hot spring right over here uh -huh. Ooh, so relieved to be home in the van see ya